Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Uh, a couple months ago now, I did a video showing some uh, old nostalgia kits. And I got a lot of response out of that. In my uh, store, I buy model collections all the time. And sometimes we get some real old cool stuff. Stuff I've never seen before. And what I thought I would do is, not all the time, but every once in a while when we get something different and unusual in, I would open up those kits and show them to you. Kind of a... Uh, Harkening back to older times, and we've got two of them here. We've got a car and an airplane, an unusual scale one, a 119 scale airplane, and then a 12 scale car from a company called IME, and this kit's from Aurora right here. So I thought I would just spend a few minutes, uh, pull into these right here. They're in really, really good shape. The boxes are mint. In fact, everything was sealed inside of this bit thing, but we're opening it for you anyway just to show you all the stuff that's inside. So if you like these type of videos, please go ahead and hit the thumbs up and the like button and tell me if you want to keep seeing these type of videos. Um, I, like I said, get these all the time, these different old kits, and it's kind of fun to look back on them. So, let's get started. Now we're going to take a look at a unusual large scale model and unusual basically because of the the scale that the the kit came in and we're looking at right now from Aurora models a 1 19th scale SE5 British Scout plane and 19th scale is just such an odd scale I mean nothing not close to anything other than maybe 1 18th which are some of the toy companies have made now we're calling this a 1960s kit uh, you'll notice on the side of the box over here that it says it's a 1973 Aurora Productions and I went and looked up online the because the instructions inside the box say 1967 on it that was the first thing I saw for date on it and it turns out the 73 reissue was just a change in box art the kit is exactly the same in fact I'll show you a picture of the the 1967 box art right now that's what it looked like when it first came out. So it's an unusual kit, and I can't wait to open this up and show you because it's some, some strange things that maybe you guys might even have some answers to uh, some of the questions I have on this kit. Okay, first thing we're going to take a look at is the fuselage. And I like showing these old kits because even for the 60s, some of the detail is is pretty decent to think that they they've made stuff like that I mean here they've put this uh, this stitching on the side of the airplane and and obviously I know a modern day model kit would you know blow this away but you gotta remember this thing is 55 years old just about and it's kind of interesting now this is a no cement required uh, screw together kit but this is the thing I want to show you if you look at the uh, the rudder on this kit it is already molded to the side. Now, the only thing I can think of is because of the size of this airplane, was this kit like in a, like in a very early U-line airplane? You know, the type that you'd, you'd put a little electric motor inside there or a gas motor or whatever, and then you'd hook it onto a string and then kind of turn it around in circles. Why else would you have the bent rudder on that? If you guys know, please go down in the uh, the comment section down below and tell me. Uh, was it just something they decided to make it look like that? Or maybe, they, like I said, the U-line is the only thing I could come up with. But that is what the body looks like. And as you can see, it's a, it's a decent size airplane right here. Once with the, uh, the front end on it, it's going to definitely be over 12 inches long. After that, we can look at the wings. And... Like we said earlier, it was designed to be screwed together. There is no bottom section of the wing, so we just have the the side, you know, the airfoil. So that's another reason it makes me think that this was designed to be a U-line, because these are very, very thin and flexible. So you don't want to have a lot of weight if you're going to be uh, doing that. So there's the one wing. And then our top wing is right here. Same thing. There's no insert other than these little areas to put the... Uh, the struts or stabilizers inside there between the two wings but god look at the size of that thing it's, it's a good uh, 16 to 18 inches long and when I got this kit the, the figure was already glued together that was the only thing that was built inside that typical what they thought of as a pilot in the 1960s and then we'll show you some of the other parts too so we had like machine guns 
Here's the radiator. And I always find it amazing too, these these old kits, the the way the sprues were. They're just like a random piece right here. There was no like now when we get a, a, a you know a sprue and it's a square or a rectangle and it's got all the parts off of it. This is just like one strip of plastic with a bunch of parts glued onto it or molded onto it. And there's our front end and two of the uh, struts here. Same thing over here. Some of the parts have fallen off these uh, pieces, but for a 50 plus year old kit or about 50 years old, it's in really, really good condition. Here is the prop. We've got our, they're actually vinyl. These are not plastic. They're a little, they're a little firm, but they actually have vinyl wheels inside of this kit. And, and it's, I'm shocked that these are still in one piece. Because usually the vinyl has deteriorated so bad that they just fall apart. You get a bag of screws and some metal wires like that. And then the back of the radiator, the other side of that. And then the two other quick things to show you. Here is the tail surfaces. And the, the wheel itself to go around those tires in there. And there again, look at this. This piece is separate right here, so... We'll take a look at the instructions in a minute and see, maybe I was right. Maybe this was a U-Line airplane. Also, we have our decal set here. And now these are old decals, no doubt about that. <laughs> look at this, they even have the cutout sheet for the back of it. So when you're cutting them out, you can cut along the lines there. But I don't know if these would hold up in water, but these are in decent condition. The guy that uh, that had these and wherever he was keeping them kept it in climate control because usually in Arizona, people store them out in their garages and stuff and a couple of summers in the heat here and they're all destroyed. But man, look at those. They're still shiny and they look like they're in pretty decent condition. And next up, I have to say this is probably my, my favorite part about looking at these old kits. Uh, it's fun to look at the plastic, don't get me wrong, and to see how things have, have progressed over the years. But you really show something's age when you look at the instructions or the paper goods inside there and they just have a different feel feel about it and compared to the way things are done now so here are the instructions and like i was telling you earlier 1967 from aurora products in west Hempstead, new york and i guess it's kit 399 and not too bad a little bit of burning on the paper after this many years but this is the part i like looking at here is to show you how they could basically in five steps put the entire airplane together now looking at this little piece here you see how we have the uh, horizontal stabilizer it says here there's some flexible hinges that were included with this kit which would mean that those pieces can move so it, it doesn't talk anywhere about being a U-line, but don't forget this is the 73 reissue, so maybe they had, had done away with that, or maybe it was designed for some other company. But uh, And then you just see how the rest of the, the airplane goes together there. And then I love looking at this stuff, guys. This is too cool when they start showing some of the other stuff that uh, they were coming out with from Whirlybirds. Not helicopters, Whirlybirds. And then the modern day fighters, and then of course, always had one of those in there. Send off for uh, a color catalog, which I don't know. Am I wrong? Is fifty cents seem like a lot for 1973? Maybe it's not, but uh, I know it's not. It's nothing now, but it seems like that should be a lot of money for a kid back in 1973. So there's a little blast from the past. Uh, a quick look at the Aurora World War One SE5 Scout plane. Uh, a very interesting kit. I know I'm going to put it in my collection of out-of-date kits. Uh, I think it'll be a nice one, and especially the box was in such great condition. I'm really happy to keep kits like that. Now we're going to take a look at a large-scale car. This is a 112 scale Excalibur SSK, and a little history on this one before we tear into it. Now this is done under the IMEI box art here. And I looked up on Scalemates. And if you guys are not familiar with Scalemates, I was actually talking to a customer that came in here and had not heard of Scalemates. And Scalemates.com is a wonderful resource for finding out if you have an old kit, if it's been reboxed, repurposed, or whatever on it there. And I found out on this one, the original iMay kit 
just as you see it in this box already here, this is the 1969 release of this kit. And starting in 1970 and then through 70 and then onward, 70, 71 area, the exact same kit was reissued but under the Bandai label. And then subsequently through the 70s and into the 80s, same Bandai kit, but they changed the box art on it. But this is the original 1969 release of this kit. And once again, I've got a really good box in great condition. It's a great display piece. So let's tear into this one and take a look at what it looks like in there. So this kit, I'm going to kind of do it in, in, in jumps here. So right off, it's a motorized kit. Throw all this to the side. So this is how this was boxed inside there. So you have your your drivetrain here, the wiring, your your gears, stuff like that, real spring. And then this was kind of cool too. These are just like a really tight spring that these were the, the exhaust pipe covers that you see right here. That was actually, for 1969, I thought, me personally, I think that was a really clever idea that they came up with. Didn't give it some realistic. Now, I don't know when you bend those, you know, to wrap around. Is it going to look good? Is it going to open up on it? But... A, a clever, clever thing that they did for 1969. Next up, we have our uh, frame. You can see how large this kit is, too. Pretty, pretty good size in a bright, bright red plastic. And then our body here, which has an insert into it that's someone snapped into place. But, oh, yeah, not glued. So it's just been snapped into place, maybe even at the factory. And that will just up right on top of that just like that there still is an electric motor inside this kit kind of cool never been opened now I'm gonna show you this next part right here and this is something that when you deal with old model kits you're gonna have all the time these are the uh, the tires inside this kit and yep they didn't make it they didn't survive the years and Luckily, they were in this uh, this cardboard box because I've seen a lot of times when these these things melt, they melt right into the plastic, and inevitably they fall on top of a piece of clear plastic like your windshield and just dissolve away part of the windshield and ruin it. But these were in a separate box, and you can see this just completely, completely collapsed on it here. And unfortunately, those are probably not salvageable. There are three in here that are. Pretty, pretty jacked up, we'll say. But, so, there is another box with another another tire that is flat as a pancake. But, look at this one right here. Now, it is a little messed up, but I'm starting to wonder. I wonder if I can get in here, if you know, to make this kit whole again. If I could possibly pack this with something like maybe clay or something to kind of get it back to its its normal form because it is pretty pliable you can see we're starting to get it back into its general shape and then of course make a resin cast of it and then make five new five new tires for it I don't know what do you guys think Do you think that was something that's salvageable or I doubt any if anyone online right now makes a, a resin <laughs> wheels for this particular kit but it's close to possibly being able to go back into shape but possibility and now I'll show you some of the sprues that are in this kit as well. Here are, there's two decent sized chrome sprues. We've got our exhaust right here. You, you start to wonder too, when you think back to the uh, the late 60s and through the 70s, all of the sci-fi movies that they made where they took these old model kits and kind of glued them together, which I've talked about in the past, like the Millennium Falcon from Star Wars has a bunch of bunch and bunch of Tamiya parts all over it here and you start to look at some of these parts and keep that in mind as I'm showing you these things how you think about when there was a model builder back then dupe for working for ILM or whatever company that was doing it that would just see these things and go oh yeah this is gonna be perfect we glue this to the side it's it's a half piece already so you you know it'll fit nice up against a flat thing but keep that in mind as you start looking at some of these other parts it's kinda cool these I mean these, here's all your uh, wheels for this kit, but you've got exhaust ports right here that you could use on some kind of sci-fi ship. Just all these cool little parts that can get turned into something else. But remember, this is 1969 technology and pretty pretty decent looking. Even the chrome, I mean, it's, it's decent, I, I think. 
Here is, um, looks like our engine transmission put together. Here's a perfect example on the, on the side, I always mention this one too, is on the side of the Millennium Falcon, there was a transmission that was cut in half, just like this one here, and it was glued onto either side of it. Now, it's not this particular kit, but you can just see how that if you just glued that onto the side of some kind of big ship, you've got all this super detail that just made it probably so much easier to, uh, to build one of those models. And we have just a couple other sprues we'll take a look at with some of the interior stuff. This is all kind of the basic stuff, what you'd imagine from that time period. The parts that make up the rest of the body. And then finally some, looks like straps or something. Oh yeah, these would be the, the straps that go over probably the hood because they're kind of a flexible plastic. And lastly, we're going to take a look at the instructions. And the first thing you're going to notice about these instructions is how much they look like modern day instructions. So I think we probably have to thank the Japanese, uh, considering this, this IMA kit was out of Japan, for the type of instructions where you see this right here with all the sprues laid out, a breakdown of each one of the, uh, the type of processes you'll do on, the, on that portion. And then really, really close up step by step instructions. You saw the parts in this kit. This kit doesn't have a ton of parts, but look at all the different uh, steps and then really how to put this whole thing together. So there you go. There's a quick look at the IMEI, uh, which would turn into Bandai 112 scale Excalibur SSK.